I'm from the Center uh, for English Language Communication at the National University of Singapore. I don't know why I went and clicked independent scholar. I'm supposed to click from an institution, University of um, Singapore. Okay, so um, at the center, what we do is we teach writing and communication courses. So we cover things like oral presentation skills, uh, workplace communication skills, academic writing skills, and we teach um, as well as proficiency English classes for uh, students who have just entered the country and uh, are going into undergraduate studies at the university. So that's a whole range of stuff there. Um, a, a, a year ago, I was given the task of designing a six lesson flip module on workplace communication skills. And this was uh, supposed to be flipped that means we needed to have an independent online pre-class learning segment, as well as an in-class learning component, right? And um, I went into this knowing very well that a major challenge with flip module is uh, getting students to complete the online work before they come to class. And the reason we need them to complete the online work before they come to class is so that they are uh, uh, filled in on the basics of the topic and they will be able to participate uh, meaningfully in the class activities, which are meant to uh, get them to apply the concepts that they have learned in the pre-class learning activities and also to extend their learning, right? So um, I, I needed to find a way to get my students to complete the pre-class work before they come to class. In there were some challenges with um, these group of students. Um, these are first year undergraduate students. They have some work experience. They have had done internship. They would have, um, uh, uh, have uh, worked in uh, several places, maybe part-time as well as barista, social workers, whatever. Um, they are 18 to 24 year olds. They would have they would be enrolled in five other modules in that semester that they are to take my class. So these students are Generation Z students. That means they are made digital natives. The internet is at their disposal. So I needed to be very aware that I cannot spend class time disseminating information. And therefore the flip module worked well because I could disseminate the information beforehand. And these students have a range of uh, experience in email writing and meeting discussions. That means those topics that cover email writing and uh, meeting skills may not appeal to some of these students who think they already know a lot about these topics. So they are not likely to want to go through materials that take them through the A to Z, the A to Z of uh, a certain topic. And these students have a heavy module load, five modules plus mine makes six, and that's a lot of uh, time they need to spend doing their homework, right? Now, another thing that I needed to consider is that they may not take a soft skills course like workplace communication as seriously as a content course um, that they do in their various uh, 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 departments, right? So I needed to take all this into consideration when I designed the module. And the challenge that I set myself at that time was to find out whether it was possible to design e-learning lessons that are so engaging that the students would want to complete the pre-class work even if no marks were awarded for completing them. Um, why is it important to me that no marks are awarded for the students to complete them? Well, in a lot of courses, uh, what people do is they get the students to read something or to view a video and then the students complete a worksheet or they do a pop quiz and then uh, these things are, are assessed and some participation marks are given. So these things are marked. The thing is, the problem is this course is only six weeks long. Therefore, I could not 
uh, spend time marking their online work. All right, there was no time to do that. And they had two assignments to complete. I had four classes to teach. Each class has 16, you know, 18 students. So that's quite a bit of marking to do. And I didn't want to have to do extra marking uh, of their online work. So the whatever thing they do with the online activity has to be independent. I should not need to have to worry about that. So I needed to find a way to get them to do the online work and uh, not have to mark it, right? Why is getting them to do the online work important? Because research shows that uh, students' engagement with uh, the, the learning activities Okay, students' engagement is their involvement in learning activities with effort, persistence, and concentration. So when I uh, look at the word engaging, I define it as the ability of these pre-class learning materials to attract and sustain the students' attention so that they would be able to complete the pre-class activities. That's my definition. I needed a set of materials that would sustain their attention enough so that they would complete it, all right? Okay, so I looked at the literature and I found McGuinness and team's work. Um, their work was on uh, using game design principles to design e-learning content. And they say that there are three important criteria for engaging e-learning content. These criteria are interactivity. E-learning content needs to be interactive. And they say that it isn't uh, about getting students to click the next, 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 next button. It's about uh, students clicking something and getting instant feedback on what they have done. All right, so instant feedback is important to the students. Number two, e-learning activities need to be challenging to the students. Challenging in this sense means that it needs to address the student's skill gap. Uh, these activities need to be able to um, identify what the students already know, what they bring to the table, and what they don't know. It needs to challenge them, okay? And the last criteria for engaging e-learning content, according to McGuinness et al., is context. The material needs to have information that is relevant to the students' uh, needs, to the students' use, to their real-world needs. Now, there's another research by Cara Nicolas and team, uh, which says that there's, it's important to link pre-class and in-class and post-class activities. This provides relevance to the students as well. So bearing all these things in mind, I went about trying to create uh, my engaging e-learning materials. And I drew inspiration um, to fulfill this interactivity criteria. I drew inspiration from the Choose Your Own Adventure books that were very popular in the 1990s. I'm not quite sure if you're familiar with them. Um, these are storybooks where there's a uh, protagonist in the story and the reader gets to decide um, what choices the protagonist takes and then the reader experiences the outcomes of those choices. So it takes them through a series of uh, choices and the reader gets to go and choose which uh, steps they want the protagonist to take. So in that same vein, I created branching scenarios using articulate rise. These are similar to the articulate 360 or articulate storyline platform that people use in instructional design. And so here, here's an example of the branching scenario I created. In the first panel on the left hand here, you see a uh, scenario, a workplace scenario, and students are given three choices. So they click one choice and they see the outcome of that scenario. In some scenarios, they get several branches. So they go through the story, uh, uh, choosing and choosing and choosing until they find come to a final outcome. The students get to redo these scenarios as many times as they want, okay? Now, the learning does not 
uh, stop here. After the experience, these scenarios, we I, I asked them to uh, reflect on their choices. So here's an example of a multiple choice or a, um, a multiple response question that I get them to complete after such a scenario. Um, I get them to reflect and ask themselves what the protagonist in that scenario did that was good, that, that, that led to a positive outcome. And then what's important here is the feedback from their choices after they click, 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 and they submit, the feedback from that choices uh, affirms or corrects their conception and also extends their knowledge with a few notes here. And I call these teaching quizzes. We've always thought of quizzes as a way to assess what students have read or what they have viewed from a video, but I'm using these quizzes to tease out what they know about a topic, what they think they know, and to affirm or correct misconceptions and extend their knowledge in the feedback of the quizzes here. So, Here's an example of an instant feedback quiz. Okay, uh, this is on the topic of email writing. So I ask them a question and they select an answer. And then the quiz gives them feedback whether they are correct or incorrect. And it provides an explanation. And in that explanation, it also points them to a link where they can read up further about the topic. So I'm using these quizzes to teach the basics of each topic instead of getting them to read through the basics in a linear fashion uh, from a text or to get them to view a video that takes them through the basics of these in a linear fashion. Uh, why did I want to do a quiz? Mainly because I wanted to interact with them. And I also wanted to cover these basics in an interesting manner. Um, I didn't want them just reading and viewing. I wanted them to be able to engage with me on an online platform without me being physically there. So this was uh, a way to replicate that teacher-student dialogue in the classroom. So using these two, uh, the, um, the, the branching scenarios and the instant feedback, okay? Um, and also, um, I work on providing a clear link between pre-class, in-class, and post-class activities. So here's a topic on assertive communication. The pre-class activity using the branching scenarios and the quizzes, I presented to them the four-step framework for assertive communication. So this is the online learning part they do before they come to class. And then this part would lead into them having to prepare for a discussion. They are given four scenarios to prepare and they come to class. This is the in-class activity. They do a discussion of the four scenarios using the knowledge that they have gained from the four-step framework that they have learned from the pre-class activities. And then they do a role play. All right, and then after that post-class, this is um, meant to be their real world application. In, an e in a minutes or uh, a meeting lesson, uh, what they do is they learn about the practices and guidelines for effective meetings and minutes writing in the e-lesson. And then in class, they watch a video of a meeting, they take the minutes and they discuss the meeting management. So it's like two lessons in one. And then post-class is an assessment activity where two teams of students are paired and they are to role play a meeting and they take the minutes for each other's meetings. So in this way, I um, am attempting to provide a clear link between the pre-class, the in-class, and the post-class activities, just to give them context, to give them a real world authentic need for going through and completing the pre-class materials, okay? So the question here is, after taking all the effort, putting in all the effort to design the e-class e-learning materials to make sure uh, it is engaging, 
did the students really think that it was engaging? That's the first question I had. Second question I had was, uh, did they actually complete the e-lessons, even though the e-lessons were not linked to assessments? So all in all, I created five e-lessons and two of the lessons were linked to assessments. Um, if you remember this one here, this is the assessment. This part is the assessment. The last part is assessment. So two of the lessons were linked to assessment. Three lessons were not. I wanted to see whether those three lessons that were not linked to assessments were, did the students take the time to complete them? Okay, so what did I find out? First thing I found out was the students thought the pre-class lessons were indeed engaging, as you can see here. So that was good news for me. I was relieved. Um, they thought the pre-class lessons were indeed relevant to their needs. They were useful. That was a relief as well. 60 plus 36, that's 96 percent almost. And uh, these are some of their comments. They thought that uh, the the e-lessons with the branching scenarios and the interactive quizzes they were more engaging than usual. Than usual here means a lot of these students would have had a webcast. They would have been used to webcast. They would have been uh, asked to read text and view videos as part of their pre-class learning material. So they thought that these branching scenarios and the clicking of the quizzes and the quizzes uh, teaching them and correcting the misconceptions, they thought all that was more engaging than usual. So that was good. Um, they noted that the quizzes were an opportunity to immediately test their knowledge and to receive instant feedback. So that was good as well. That's what I intended. Right. So, and, and of course, they noted a few areas that were in need of improvement, in need of improvement. So, for example, they noted that the lessons had minimal examples. Well, that couldn't be helped because I had to keep the lessons short. And uh, therefore, I provided maybe one or two examples for each of the uh, main items. Okay. Um, and some of them noted that. Although the lessons were interactive, they also thought it was a bit worthy, um, despite the effort to make it less worthy. Okay, and uh, one of the other comments was that they thought that uh, the lessons could benefit with more practice work. So, so this comment here, number three, comment number three underscores the importance of following up skills-based lessons like this with uh, in-class practical activities. So they learn the theory, they learn the concepts in the e-lessons, and then they come to class and they apply it. Um, and that's important for skills-based lessons. And number four, they thought that web lectures uh, were not as engaging as face-to-face -face interactions. And this is, I suppose, very true. So um, it's a legitimate concern on the student's part here. Okay, so if you remember, one of my questions was, um, is it possible to, to, to create e-lessons that are so engaging that students want to complete the e-lessons and the tasks associated, even though we don't award marks to these e-lessons. So if you see here, I created five lessons in lesson number two, which is minutes writing, and lesson number four, which is email writing. These two lessons were linked to assessments, graded assessments, all right? The other three lessons were not assessment link. And you can see very clearly that lessons that were linked to assessments had higher completion rates. How did I measure completion rates? The interactive lessons were uh, inserted into the university learning management system. And if students had gone through the lesson, the learning management system tracks them and gives us a report of uh, whether the students have completed or not completed the lesson. So I looked at only students who have completed the lessons and have spent at least 30 minutes on that lesson to consider them as having completed the lesson. If they spent 30 minutes, below 30 minutes on a particular lesson, I would consider 
consider that to be incomplete. Why? Because I don't think uh, a student who spends less than 30 minutes on that lesson would have been sufficiently engaged in the activity. So that's how I uh, define uh, engagement. So from this graph, it looks as if um, assessment and grading and marks is necessary to encourage students to complete these uh, e pre-class learning activities. I asked them in a survey as well um, why they completed or did not complete the pre-class learning materials. So students who said that they completed the e-learning e materials, uh, the main reason was 51% of them said they wanted to learn. And I thought, oh, okay, that's a good reason. 10% um, of them noted other reasons. They thought that it was compulsory that they had to, but it wasn't actually compulsory. And uh, it wasn't stated anywhere in the course that it was compulsory to complete the materials. They only thought that it was. But I like that 50 odd percent of them thought that uh, they wanted to learn. That's why they took the time to complete the materials. Students who did not complete the materials, um, they said that they did not have the time. And if you notice, these students would have five other modules to do in that same semester. And my course is offered in, uh, in half... Okay, so one semester is 12 weeks long and my course is offered two times within that semester. So the first group takes uh, the course in the first six weeks of the semester. And then there's this other group who takes the course in the next six weeks of the semester. So it's offered twice a semester. And you can see, right, from here, the completion rates, you can see that the orange color, which is the second uh, part of the semester, the second six weeks of the semester, the completion rates are lower. Okay, you can see it's lower across the board. So this seems to indicate that it's possible that the students in the second part of the semester may be busier, a lot busier with the coursework than the students from the first part of the semester. And maybe that's why they did not have as much time to complete the pre-class learning materials. That's just uh, my guess, I'm not quite sure. Okay, now having done all that right, I suppose what's really important is impact on learning. So whether they completed the materials or not, what was the impact on the learning? And what I have here is um, results from one class of 18 students, I only look at one class and I gave them a pre-test. The pre-test is before they viewed the e-learning materials. And then I gave them an after e-learning e material test. So after they viewed the e-learning material, they were supposed to complete this activity. And then after that, they had their assessment with the rest of the students. So this, this after SCORM and after class, these are my post-test one and post-test two. So it seems that um, the e-learning materials did uh, 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 help the students uh, do better, perform better in the uh, tests, right? And their performance improved even more after the class session. So, uh, what does this mean? This means that the e-learning materials were effective, even though uh, some of them did not complete. Okay, I need to highlight here, this is a soft skills course um, to do with minutes writing and email writing. Some of these students could very well not do any of the pre-class work and still be able to score some marks in the assessments because these are general soft skills, right? They would already know how to do some minute writing and email writing and um, communication in general. It's just that students who did not complete the e-class work would probably not be able to score as well as those students who did. Okay. 
So what is my conclusion from all this? Um, students found the lessons interesting, engaging, and very relevant. That's good. But it does seem as if some sort of grading is necessary to encourage them to complete the pre-class learning activities. After all, <laughs> um, however, despite all this, I need to remind myself that um, the primary focus of e-learning and pre-class work shouldn't be on its appeal, but rather on its effectiveness, its impact for learning. And that needs to be at the top of our course design, I think. And uh, so in terms of course design, this is what I have put together for course design for soft skills, right? Mm -hmm having students read through materials and watching videos that covers the basics from A to Z probably won't work with my students. What would work is to uh, find some way to challenge their current knowledge and skills, to affirm their current knowledge or to correct misconceptions, to extend that current knowledge and to check their understanding. This um, traditional or, or, or well-tested method of engaging students, this is what's important rather than the uh, design and, and, and the uh, decorative elements of the course. And that's it. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.